Good morning, Matt Cameron Smith. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning, Matt. Good to see you. Likewise. And where, whereabouts are you today, Matt? Uh, sitting today, back at uh, Uluru next week and looking forward to it. Fantastic, fantastic. So, first question I wanted to ask you today is, um, you started your gig in like, August, I think it was, first week of August, yeah. uh, not, not that long ago, and I'm sure it feels like a lifetime already for you. How, how, how have these first few months been for you? Uh, I think like many of us in, in tourism, it's been uh, an extraordinary ride. So much has happened in the last three months. Uh, an example of that would be, we enjoyed 33 direct air services a week uh, in February to Uluru. Uh, in middle of August, that count was mm. zero. Uh, so delighted to say that uh, Jetstar have been a fantastic partner. They've really responded, they've been nimble, uh, and have really felt the demand for Australians having an amazing Indigenous tourism experience. And uh, as of the 2nd of December, we will have 12 direct services per week out of Brisbane, Sydney and Melbourne. So getting that going again, getting access going again, has been a real focus of ours. Uh, equally, balancing uh, demand with the guest experience has been very fluid. So it's, uh, it's been a busy few months. Yeah, it certainly sounds like it. And uh, a lot of moving parts, as you say, by the sounds. Um, so, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So uh, for those of us, I guess, who don't know much about Voyages, can you give us a bit of a, a, bit of a, a, a breakdown, I guess, of the operation in general? Because there's, there's obviously a lot there to talk about. Sure. So Voyages is very much a purpose-led organisation. Uh, we're very focused on ensuring that we are delivering uh, authentic and uh, sustainable Indigenous tourism experiences. Uh, we're providing... Uh, Indigenous Australians with employment opportunities through the National Indigenous Training Academy and that's delivered in three strands uh, from hospitality, uh, horticulture and retail mm -hmm. uh, and really at the front of that that we're delivering amazing guest experiences uh, at, at a range of our assets which include Ayers Rock Resort and Ayers Rock Resort is actually more of a township than one property so we have uh, the iconic sails in the desert which has just enjoyed a, a, a multi-million dollar refurb and is looking fantastic. Mm -hmm. While the market's been a bit quiet, we've been very busy uh, getting that finished. Uh, we've got the Lost Camel, we've got Emu Walk Apartments, we've got uh, Outback Pioneer, uh, our campground uh, and our, our powered uh, van sites. Uh, so there's a range of accommodation options uh, at Uluru. Plus, of course, the both the dining that we control, there's 13 F&B outlets in total, uh, plus the iconic Sounds of Silence uh, dinner, the amazing Field of Light, uh, and uh, our, our premium dining experience, which is uh, Tali Wiru, uh, which is a fully uh, immersive, Indigenous-delivered uh, food and wine dining experience under the stars. Mm. And we've also got Mossman Gorge uh, Centre, uh, which is right in the National Park of Mossman Gorge there, uh, delivering amazing Indigenous experiences uh, into the National Park. Yeah, I'm actually going up there uh, for New Year, actually, so I'm looking forward to checking it out. Yeah, I've not uh, been yeah. up there for a long time, and I haven't actually been to the Voyages Centre, so we'll right. definitely... I'm there, I'm there next week, 1st of December. We're going okay. to get to New South Wales, so I'm, <laughs> I'm on the fly. It is a joyous day indeed, isn't it, 1st of December, for, for so many reasons. Yeah. Yeah, well, I guess, yeah, just on that, you mentioned it's obviously been a hugely challenging time for everybody. Um, how do you think Voyages has fared and, and, and how are you feeling about the business as we sort of move forward? Well, I think it's important that we don't sugarcoat what, we, what we've been through as an industry and it's been difficult uh, from uh, our team, stand down, stand ups, stand down again, depending on what's going on uh, with our various source markets. Yeah. Uh, traditionally, we would enjoy about half and half domestic and international. Mm. With international uh, not on the, the cards, at least for another six months, uh, we've really turned our focus to domestic. Uh, and I guess the, the good thing about that is uh, for us or for the, an experience like Uluru and, and Voyages is that uh, Uluru has been on the bucket list for so many Australians for so long and we're finally seeing it move from the bucket list to the to-do list. Mm. Uh, so it's interesting to watch the dynamics that play with that. So as Australians can't go offshore, our length of stay has gone, 18 months ago it was 1.72 nights mm. and it's now grown to 3.1 average length of stay. So people are, are coming for longer, they're doing more, uh, but at the same time they're doing less. So they'll, they'll come and they'll do all the amazing experiences, then I'll have a decompression day. Yeah. Where lounge by the pool or go for walks or relax. So. Uh, it's great to see uh, the domestic market really embracing uh, 
the experiences that are available in our country. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's probably part of it, of, of the recovery side. But on the other side, like any hotel and resort operator, we've had to uh, and have uh, certainly been happy to introduce a whole new range of protocols from check-in to cleaning to uh, to hygiene. And there's a, always a cost to that for any operator. Mm. Uh, there's no less elasticity in, in, in price, so it erodes margin. So you've got to be careful of that in terms of how we operate. And it's the same for airlines and crews and everyone else who's out there trying to get their business going again. So uh, COVID has a cost both in uh, lost revenue, it has a cost both in our operating protocols, uh, and it has a cost to our people. It's been a really difficult uh, six months emotionally, physically. Uh, the ones that have been working and working harder and, uh, and doing more, uh, then equally as we bring people back in, uh, it's, it's warming the engine back up again. It's been a, a challenge. But uh, fortunately, the team have, uh, have embraced that. Uh, we, we currently have sales open and operating and looking fantastic. Mm. We have uh, uh, the Lost Camel operating and looking amazing. And uh, we also have uh, the campground operating. So, uh, and, of course, any walk apartments. So, uh, you know, there's plenty of space. Fantastic. And you touched on it briefly, but are you seeing, I know it's, I realise it's still early days, but are you seeing different kind of demographics coming, looking at booking to come out to Uluru or even, I guess, up to Mossman Gorge? And are they looking for different kind of things, do you think? Yeah, it's a really good question, Matt. Uh, we're certainly seeing a younger crowd mm. and a family crowd. So that's been quite new for us. And it's, it's probably challenged the team a little bit in terms of the sort of guest experiences that we're offering. Uh, it was great to be up there recently and see so many families out there at Sounds of Silence uh, having a great time and, and having a shared experience, mm. uh, which has been fantastic for us. Uh, Jetstar launched a Kids Fly Free initiative yep. uh, for December, January, and uh, we've got a lot of families coming up for Christmas. <laughs> so uh, we're going to put Sanders shorts on to make sure he can survive. the. <laughs> the but, uh, uh, it's, just, it's just great to see people doing more, coming more often, uh, probably to a degree ignoring the traditional seasonality mm. that we would otherwise see out there. Yep. Uh, and uh, just wanting to get away. I think it's proof that Aussies just want to go. You know, they want to go somewhere. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we certainly believe that the, the offering we have from a, from a cultural point of view, from a learning point of view, mm. uh, and, and the physical property itself is looking fantastic. So um, we think it'll be a better than usual summer period. Yeah, fantastic. And it's some, some good points there. I think one thing I've heard a lot of is intergenerational travel, I guess, and people yeah. bring those really big milestone occasions, whether it's a birthday or, a, you know, some kind of celebration forward and just thinking, you know what, let's just do this now. Let's, let's lock it in and do it as soon as possible. That's right. But let's go. And, and certainly the, the competitive airfares that have been in the market, Mm. And the deals that have been out there have been um, outstanding. If you look at, you know, even a year ago, mm. uh, it's, uh, it's a great time to take advantage of that. And I guess for, for the travel agent community and, and for the travellers at large, you know, we've got this paradise all to ourselves for a while. <laughs> we've got a chance to get out there and, and see all that Australia has to offer. Yeah. Do you think it makes it easier or harder not having the international traveller mix now? We're, we're, I guess we're solely Australian you know, locals right now. Does it, does it change the dynamic? You mentioned that briefly, but does it change things at all? Or oh, I, I, You know what, I, I think travel has a, a, almost like a balance sheet. Mm. Uh, inbound and outbound are actually more reliant. One's not the enemy of the other. Mm. Uh, you've, you've got to have both uh, to have a sustainable tourism industry. Yeah. So, and as much as when the borders open, Australians will, will go out. Mm -hmm. um, so too will internationals come in. So, uh, you know, there, there's a, a, a trade balance there, I guess. But for travel agents, uh, you know, they've done it so tough. And, you know, certainly our partners have done that and we're supporting our partners wherever we can. And I think it's a great opportunity for travel agents to really embrace all that domestic has to offer yeah. in order to sustain their businesses. But we need the borders open again yeah. uh, have the industry survive. So... That's a reality. I think that the domestic borders have been a bit of a challenge for some as well. Mm. Uh, you know, certainly when you're you are based in one state and you can only hunt for business in in other states that aren't open, uh, it provides a challenge. But that's resolving. So it's yeah. just great to see. So uh, uh, and I hope this vaccines uh, are less they are. Yeah, well, we just need WA especially to come to the party now, I guess, and complete uh, complete the picture. That would be great. 
Fingers crossed. Now, just coming back to Uluru for a second, um, you mentioned the reefer briefly before. Tell us a little bit about that. What's, um, it's been a while now since I've been out to sales and I, I really did enjoy it. That was a number of years ago now. So what can people look forward to now with the new reefer that's, now that's been done? Sure. So we did a lot of work on the common areas over the last 18 months to two years. Uh, but now we've done a complete demolition of the guest rooms, uh, right from the bathrooms to all the, uh, the fitting, fixtures and fittings. So they are looking absolutely amazing. I think the bathrooms particularly are uh, something that we're very proud of. Uh, it always sounds a bit odd, but, you know, hoteliers, you look at bathrooms and, and, and bedding, it, it gets everyone excited. And uh, the bathrooms are looking fantastic. We've got these incredible terrace rooms with day beds on them. It's the perfect place to sit and relax of an afternoon uh, as the sun sets. Uh, so the, the property itself is looking amazing and all credit to the team because they really have worked in exceptionally hard over these uh, these six months to get the property ready to go. We've got one more wing yet to come back uh, and that'll come back uh, late December at this stage, which will mean that all of the guest rooms and sales have been done from top to bottom. Yeah. So looking looking just fantastic. Amazing. Have you have you created any new experiences or sort of new offerings around that side of things as well? Is there anything to share there that we need to know about? Yeah, so we're always working on both refining what we already have and then uh, new experiences. And we, we are working on one now that we will uh, we'll talk about when we're ready, uh, which should hopefully be in the coming months. But okay. it really is about uh, expanding on that. Uh, the, the, the cultural, uh, the, the the light, the sound of 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 Uluru. Mm. Uh, it's the next generation, I guess you might call, a field of light. And, and the field of light had a major major refurb also only recently. Yep. So it's looking incredible. So we've both refined the experiences that we've got. You know how we offer our sounds of silence dinner, from from timing to menu changes. Uh, you know any any buffets we've had, we've reverted to uh, either an a la carte service or what we call a served buffet, mm -hmm. where our team's actually serving the buffet to the guests. Uh, so it depends on on which dining experience we've got, uh, using more and more indigenous ingredients wherever we possibly can, uh, and really focusing on what's seasonal. Uh, and ultimately, it comes down to the guest experience. Just making sure that our retail offering, our F and B outlets. Uh, and our service is really up to par in terms of what the guests are expecting and beyond. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Now, I was reading, I was having a good squeeze on your website. There's, some, there's so much great content on there, but I, one statement I really loved, and it's really it's in your little story about us section, and it says that by road we're located 450 kilometres from the nearest large town, Alice Springs. To some, that might seem like the middle of nowhere. We like to think of it as being in the middle of everything. So I really like that. Um, and, it, and it talks to um, the great Qantas flight to somewhere that I know you've got coming up as well. So uh, tell us a little bit about what that's looking like. Yeah, you know, it's uh, back to the, our earlier conversation around uh, people's desire to travel. Mm. And the Qantas flight to nowhere, as everyone would have probably seen in the media, uh, sold out incredibly fast but didn't land. Mm. And uh, as part of that activation, we were there with Qantas who are been a great partner of ours for many years. Happy birthday, Qantas, if you're watching. Uh, and uh, they they flew over Uluru to a low flight uh, over the rock and, uh, you know, we wanted to get a big sign up there saying, you know, you can land. <laughs> and so as part of those discussions, uh, Qantas were very quick to respond again. You know, they're, they're, they are being as nimble as they possibly can. And uh, we are delighted to welcome the first flight to somewhere uh, to Uluru next weekend. Uh, and you know this is this is a one night experience with low flying um, scenic flights all the way up the coast and back again. Yeah. And uh, business class was four and a half thousand dollars for one night, and it sold out in twenty minutes. Yes, yeah, so I think it's it's proof that um, price is not the the currency here. Availability and and access is probably the currency, and it's probably a good message for everyone in the industry to say, guys, people want to go. You know, let's just put an offer in front of them that's, that's uh, viable. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's uh, exciting and they'll jump on it mm -hmm. and so the guests will arrive uh, at the property we'll greet them they're doing an amazing dot painting uh, class in the afternoon so they'll have a, an awesome souvenir that they create to take back with them uh, they'll have a lot of goodie bags we'll be entertaining them in flight uh, they'll have a private a few hours to relax in the afternoon by the pool or do whatever they want freshen up there's a private sounds of silence experience that evening uh, for dining Yep. Next morning, they're collected by 80 Kings and they'll head out and explore Uluru for sunrise, Katajuta and round, uh, pop back to the property for, for brunch. 
Mm. And then we fly back on Sunday, departing uh, on or around uh, 1.30 to right. land in Sydney at 6 o'clock. So uh, quite an exciting initiative. It sounds like an amazing experience, yeah. And as you said, I think it talks exactly to that bucket list once-in-a-lifetime almost trip that you, yeah, yeah. Uh, probably isn't going to be once-in-a-lifetime by the sounds of it. Probably sounds yeah. like it's going to be <laughs> uh, yeah. trips coming up. And I think there's another interesting point that I've seen a lot recently around um, agents specifically organising charters, private charters. I know Alliance Airlines did one recently as well with Travel Associates. I think it was an agent up in Rockhampton. It was four, actually. Huge, yeah, sold out yeah. of the she's, she's The ladies had to put on uh, quite a few more since, which is just brilliant. Really. Yeah. yeah, they did four charters, two out of Mackay and two out of Townsville, and they sold out. Uh, we're working on one now out of Cairns. So, again, it, it just shows that it's not necessarily where you're from or where you think uh, where you would traditionally uh, go to. Mm. It's about a proposition that's exciting, mm. uh, that gives the guests an amazing experience. Uh, it needs to be the right price point, of course. But people want to go. Yeah, yeah. No, it's fantastic to see. And I, and I think really good to see that level of innovation coming through from agents as well, just to think about, yeah. you know, as you say, the demand's there. So, you know, buy it and they will they'll put it out there and they will come or whatever the saying, yeah. whatever the saying now. Right. You know what I mean? I um, so um, I guess just, again, quickly on accessibility, I guess, and you mentioned Jetstar, and, of course, they've been great in reinvigorating the market. Do you think... We're going to see an increase in more um, more flights coming out to the room. I, I think we'll definitely see an increase in flights uh, as the markets open up and as uh, the markets free up. Uh, as you know, I, I do again feel for the airlines. It's a lot of machinery and it's a lot of uh, uh, governance structures around. It takes a while to get an aircraft back into service. You've got a crew, uh, you've got slots, you've got all those things to, to contend with. Mm. Uh, and it's a, always a fine balance of demand and and, uh, and capacity. But certainly, I think we'll see a, uh, probably a 50% uh, pre-COVID level of, of service by January, uh, which is fantastic. The other reality is, though, with half international and half domestic, uh, some of those routes were really about um, through carriage for international routes. Uh, they were about interline agreements and so on. So I don't think we'll see the full level of, of access until the international borders start to open again. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, let's hope that's soon. <laughs> hope that's soon. A million dollar question. Yeah. Uh, now, talking about Indigenous tourism, which of course is, you know, sets, sets everything you do up. And I know your vision is around creating opportunities for Indigenous Australians through cultural tourism. How, how does that translate into, I guess, the strategy for everything that you do? What does, what does that look like? So it's, it's two sides, Matt. So part of that is, is the experience that our guests have. Mm. And the other part of it is ensuring that uh, we are respectful to the community, uh, that we are... Uh, making sure we give back to the community where we possibly can, yeah. and we're uh, we we are developing employment opportunities for the community. And I mentioned earlier the National Indigenous Training Academy. Mm. Uh, and this weekend we have our next round of graduates coming through, which is fantastic. So they've they've stuck it out. They'll have their certification uh, by the weekend, and that will actually mark over 500 graduates that have passed through uh, NITA. Awesome. And so these guys are, uh, are getting a career in, in tourism in those three disciplines. Yeah. And uh, most stay with us. Some go on to other careers, and that's fantastic. It's all about giving them life skills. Uh, mm -hmm. And night is also really about uh, on-the-job training. So if they're doing horticulture, they're in our gardens, they're managing the gardens throughout the various seasons that we've got, which can be a challenge. Yeah. Uh, equally, our hospitality trainees are out there delivering sounds of silence. They're... Uh, on, the, on their land, you know, they're delivering our guest experiences in the restaurants and the pool bar, uh, and then the same for retail, where we have our 12 retail outlets. Uh, and we will soon launch, um, I can't remember if it's a sequel or not, but I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we, we won't tell, don't tell anyone else. Uh, we're launching a new gallery, so we've um, spent a lot of time redoing our gallery. It will be called GOKA, yeah. or the Gallery of Central Australia. Amazing. And we'll have artists and residents, we'll have exhibitions on. So it's a great way for us, uh, from, a, from a retail perspective, to bring the community in, mm. uh, to give the guests an experience where they're actually watching the artists at work, uh, and also to be able to see it in a gallery kind of, uh, of, of format. Yeah. So we're really excited about that. That'll open very early in the new year. 
Okay, fantastic. And, and I know that um, all of Voyager's profits do go back into support and training for Indigenous Australians as well. That is the, that's the... Correct. So we're, we're a subsidiary of the ILSC or the Indigenous Land and Sea Corporation. Yep. Uh, who are incredibly supportive of all the things that Voyagers do. So uh, it, we're technically a non-for-profit, absolutely. Yeah, amazing. And I guess talking about sustainability on a, on a wider wider sort of spectrum, I guess across all of the Voyagers operations, can you, can you tell us a little bit about that? So I know obviously being in such very incredibly harsh environments, um, having sustainability is at the core of, of basically surviving, let alone operating a business. Yeah, and you know what, Matt, that was a, a real eye-opener for me, uh, having been to the rock many times, uh, but to actually go behind the scenes in the energy plant, mm. uh, the water, water desalination area, the, the waste disposal and how we manage that. Uh, so we're very mindful that we are a remote uh, destination mm. and that uh, we eliminate single-use plastics wherever we possibly can. Uh, it's not about recycling, it's about not using it in the first place for us. Yep. Uh, it's about ensuring that we're not, we're not uh, generating any landfill, uh, mm. that the organics are composted, that the water's treated properly. Uh, you know, power and water is critical for us. So we have a solar farm out there generating as much as we possibly can via solar, which makes sense because we've got a lot of sunshine. Yeah. Uh, and, and equally in terms of the guests, you know, the uh, refillable water bottles and uh, the sort of uh, produce that we use, the food that we use, how we can recycle any, any waste. Mm. So it's, it's really pivotal to us uh, as, a, as a regional property that we've got to focus on sustainability. Mm. Um, yeah, and I, I, the solar one's interesting as well. And I, is, how much of the resort does it sort of, is it power, do you, do you think? Is it, a, uh, it, it depends. It, it's, and it's seasonal. So yep. uh, you know, we're working now in terms of, uh, uh, it's, it's the thing about energy curtailment. So we want to make sure we can store it and that needs a battery. So we're working on that at the moment. Yep. Uh, with some uh, uh, technology providers. We want to make sure that what we're generating uh, back into the grid we can store and use it at a later date. Yep. Uh, we, you know, we operate an airport, we operate an IGA, we operate a lot of things. So there's different power that runs constantly, but we have our, what we call our central energy plant mm. and they can direct the power to certain parts of the property at different times of the day uh, based on what we know as traditional usage. So anything from how we put hot water pressure out to how we control air conditioning. It's all done based on when we know people are in or out of the property and we can dial down and dial up the energy usage to make it as efficient as possible yeah. and to ensure we're not wasting energy. Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. Now, I just wanted to come back quickly again to talking about Indigenous tourism for a second. And it feels to me, uh, I'd love to get your thoughts on this, um, for whatever reason, Indigenous tourism has often not quite had the, um, I guess, the, the showcase is, is needed, I felt, in Australia anyway. And I feel like COVID, for whatever, for whatever reason, has given us a chance to really just take stock of where we are at and maybe have a little bit more time to yeah. look at different things within Australia. And we talked about more Australians, of course, exploring our own backyard and all of that good stuff. Do you think this is, is a really pivotal time now for Indigenous tourism to really go up the... Go up the, you know, up the people's, I guess, wish list in terms of experiences and things that they'd like to do, or even just finding out more about what indigenous tourism even means. Yeah, I think so, Matt. You know, there's um, for some Australians, they uh, will see the the traditional side, mm. but there's also an amazing contemporary side of mm. indigenous tourism uh, around uh, food, around produce. Uh, you know, there's some great indigenous beers uh, on the marketplace. Yeah. Uh, you know, Green Ant Gin is fabulous and it's an indigenous owned business. Yeah. So a lot of really cool contemporary offerings coming through. Mm. Uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a culture based on storytelling. Yeah. And that storytelling is, is usually done via a song, via art and, and dance. So there's a, a, a balance to amazing contemporary art and traditional art. Uh, you know, we run bush tucker tours and people are often fascinated with the fact that there's a rosemary and a thyme and a, uh, and a basil that's grown in, in the bush, uh, a guandong and bush tomato. There's so much produce out there, uh, seasonal. And I think bringing that to life for guests, not just in a, a way where you're walking through a garden, but to actually have it in your meal that night uh, to, to bring it to life in a contemporary way is really quite exciting. Mm. And certainly our, our focus is about the balance of both, the traditional and the contemporary. Uh, for Australians right now, I think it is a great time to discover the history of the oldest living culture in the world. Yeah. Uh, in fact, Ernie Dingo's got a great quote. Um, it's not mine, it's his, but, you know, there's most kids in Australia can say hello or goodbye in, in French, Italian, Spanish, Mandarin. 
but how many can say hello and goodbye in any of the 330 dialects uh, of the traditional owners, uh, which is Palya, if you're um, in the Anunu language in Uluru. So I think it's a really important time, not just for travellers to discover it, but for, for kids to discover it. Mm. Uh, and the, the field trips that one might have otherwise have gone to Italy for language or, or religion or to Vietnam, or wherever they might have gone, uh, what a great opportunity to get more more school kids up to Uluru uh, and around Australia, Kakadu, Darwin, all, all throughout, well, to yeah. discover um, the history of this amazing place. Yeah, it's hugely transformative, which I guess is what travel is supposed to be, isn't it? So it's lovely that we can do it in our own backyard. So, yeah. Now, uh, going back to yourself for a second, now you've held senior roles at so many businesses, from Tourism Australia, Ridges, obviously you work with Travel Corporation, for Fargo AOT, Kings. Yeah. Yes, your new role feels like a beautiful melting of all of those things. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's exciting, you know. Um, I've been fortunate to work for some incredible businesses, the Travel Corporation, extraordinary brands, yeah. uh, Tourism Australia, Ridges Hotels, uh, a great uh, learning uh platform as well as uh, offering incredible experiences and, and I think where we are now with Voyages and where we want to go in terms of future expansion really is about bringing in a lot of those elements you know it's uh, the experience we offer in Uluru is certainly about Ayers Rock Resort but it's also about our amazing partners that offer uh, various touring experiences uh, be it from you know, jumping out of a plane flying in a plane doing an amazing tour out to Kings Canyon or uh, or to and I believe certainly uh, a field of light, sunrise, is a, is a really special time to, to view that as the rock uh, illuminates and, and the field starts to dim. It's really quite special. So uh, I guess the background of, of working from within touring as well as uh, destination marketing and, and hotels, it kind of wraps it together. Yeah, amazing. Now, just on that, on trade, I guess, what, um, what do you feel are the big opportunities for when it comes to agents for, for voyages? Well, certainly, uh, you know, we, we've always been an agent-friendly business and, and that won't change. Uh, and we welcome agents up there. We've got an amazing agent right out there at the moment of only $130 a night in sales, which is, you know, extraordinary good uh, value. Yep. Uh, and some of the Jetstar flights are as low as about 130 bucks each way. So it really is a, a, a opportunity that, you know, if you're not as busy as you were, um, it's a great time to, I guess, learn about what's going on. Mm. Uh, and... Uh, certainly will be supportive, uh, not just from, a, uh, I guess, a traditional tourism point of view, but also from a business events point of view. Yeah. And all those conferences that would have otherwise gone offshore. Uh, now we can meet again and we can have uh, larger crowds again. Uh, what a great opportunity to uh, have um, those uh, small to medium enterprise or large businesses uh, actually come out to a place like Airs Rock Resort. Mm, perhaps an opportunity for some agents to come out and do a, a workation from there, maybe. Absolutely. Uh, need some chefs. If anyone's good in the kitchen out there, please yes. sing out. Chef, okay, brilliant. Chefs needed. Yes. Um, now, just again, talking about trade, are, are there sort of any sort of tips or little sort of gems that you can share with agents when it comes to actually selling voyages and the kind of things that they, you know, you think might be the, the yeah, just the little things to get people over the line when it comes to talking about travelling to voyages, so whether it's a real sure. or any sure. I think in talking to some of our trade partners, often I think that they, they, they would see us as a, a you know a one or two night proposition, mm. and uh, and I don't need to tell trade this that you know that agents know how to create value from a larger file. So I would encourage uh, anyone to look at a three to four day proposition. Yep. Uh, and the, the touring can be sold from the website. So uh, before people get up there, I would encourage an agent to really go through what's available. Mm. Uh, and it's commissionable. So, uh, you know, try and fill that file as, as much as you can before they leave, yeah. rather than uh, leave it to the guests uh, to, to find their own way once they arrive. So I think it's a real opportunity to sell up. Yeah. Right. And also uh, to look at the territory more broadly, mm. around Alice Springs, around Kings Canyon, uh, Kakadu and Darwin, that there's so much to see and do. You know, it, it really offers a, 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 a rich experience. Mm. And that, that line from Darwin down or Uluru up uh, will give someone a holiday they'll never forget. Mm. And you've got, you've got lots of offerings at different price points too, don't you, in terms of value for, for people with different you know, budgets to spend, I guess. Absolutely, Matt. So from the Lost Camel, which is our lead-in, mm. uh, we've got uh, uh, the two-bedroom apartments at Emu Walk and, of course, sales with a variety of, of room configurations. So 
uh, we can certainly cater for different budgets. Mm. Now, I want to finish today really by, um, I guess, just wrapping up and getting a bit of insight from you in terms of what 21 looks like, crystal ball. I mean, geez, yeah. where we've come from, I guess, has been a pretty horrible place, but it does feel like we are getting some momentum now and some good news to share. What are yeah. you personally looking forward to in terms of voyages? And you've got lots going on, but um, yeah, what, is, what does 21 look like at this stage? Well, you know, if, I, if I think back to this time last year, um, <laughs> when, you know, were bushfires and then we had COVID. I, I, I think 22 has got to be better. 21 has got to be better, right? It's um, uh, 21, 22, I think is going to be the recovery year uh, mm. for the industry. Uh, I think that things will change a bit. You know, uh, most travellers have completely forgotten mm. why you can't take liquids on a plane or why your shoes must come off as you go through or why your laptop comes out. It just is what you do. And I think that um, hygiene and, and those hygiene protocols will be as much of part of travel as uh, the liquids and the laptop are in terms of, of the screening process. And I, I, I would congratulate Qantas on their stand around, uh, you know, no vaccine, no flying. It's good for their staff. It's good for the guests. Uh, and it gets people moving again. And there's, there's no doubt. I mean, I mean, you can see it in some of the initiatives that are happening. Uh, once we can go, once the, we can actually travel uh, further afield, uh, it will be a, a, a sharp ramp up for agents. And uh, our challenge as an industry is to be ready for that time. Uh, if only we knew when it was, uh, it would make things a lot easier. Uh, but I think we need to plan for success would be my tip for 21 is, uh, is get ready and uh, make sure you can move fast enough when, when the green light's given to travel again. Yeah. Well, some fantastic advice there, Matt. I couldn't agree more. I think it's going to be a brilliant time for agents once we get through this. And uh, I think agents' relevance is going to be never more prominent than, than after all this is done. So, yeah. Here's to that. Indeed. So, uh, yeah. Well, look, thank you so much for your time today, Matt. It's been brilliant to speak to you. Good luck with everything in the short term, especially the Qantas flight to somewhere next week. Very looking forward to seeing you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Disappointed I missed out on getting a ticket myself, but uh, sounds like there might be a few more in the offing as well. By, uh, Let's hope so. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, take care, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, Matt. Good to see you as always. Likewise, Matt. Thanks again.